Hello Wildlanders, I am super excited to bring you this video. Today, we are discussing the massive new Wildlander Update 1.2. This was originally called the Jobs Update, but has been changed to the Civil Life Update to better reflect the general theme. I would argue that this update lays out the groundwork for the rest of the world of Wildlander. A lot of what this does is flesh out some of the more shallow areas of the game experience. In a very general lens, we are looking at major changes to the religion system. Currently, there really isn't one. Sometimes, I get lonely traversing the large landscape in Skyrim, and paying for the company of a travel companion isn't always piquing my interest, nor that of my wallet. Thankfully, in this update, Lucian the Follower is being added. Next on the list is a big win for controller players. Dylan, the owner of the mod pack, has worked on a system so that controller players will be able to use every hotkey, similarly to keyboard players. Looking at the biggest selling point for this new system is the missives. Lizzie has expanded on the traditional missive system on several different levels to create a more dynamic road of work the player can and will encounter. This next topic isn't guaranteed as the team isn't sure whether or not they will have time to fit it into the update, but they have spent time working on a large revamp of the entire bandit system. There are also a couple small changes to enhance the gameplay experience that we are going to cover. Starting at the beginning, let's dive into the religion portion of this update. The layout for religion's progress is based around slow and continual growth. You won't see significant jumps in power like with the perk system. Think of this as 1% improvement consistently. While not an exact quote from Dylan, it is the right type of thinking for how he has laid out the progress for religion. My first thought hearing this was, great, I like the idea of continual growth, but I don't know very much about the gods. How am I going to progress with them? What we know so far is, as you submit yourself to these gods and serve them, you will get boons in proportion to your favor with them. When you go to a shrine, you actually have multiple options. You can pray as per usual and see what the god has to say to you, which could be nothing at all. You can also pray for guidance, helping lead you to what's next, or pray for a blessing to help with your adventure. If you've done things to scorn a deity, you also have the option to seek repentance. The goal for this system is to gain favor through a large number of means typically falling under the umbrella of things they care about. One example, if a deity hates vampires and you slay one. While the deities are watching you, they gauge their opinion of you based on wearing their amulet or even the armor you're wearing can help grow favor. You won't have as many barriers when it comes to being able to worship a god. An example, if you are resurrecting the dead and try to worship Arke, you won't be completely denied from his powers. This does not come without some risk. Let's say a god hates you for choices you continue to make. I wouldn't expect a warm welcome from them, and they may actually try to kill you. As with most religion mods, you will also be able to worship in a number of different places, and something exciting about this mod is, you can even worship multiple gods if you so choose. Something that's unique to this mod pack is that you will also get feedback from the deity. And according to Dylan, there's a ton of feedback you can get, which I personally am excited to play out. Like if I go to the Shrine of Akatosh, listen carefully when I do this, right? So we're going to pray for a blessing. Nothing happened. Sometimes there's like a little sound that plays, and that sound is actually indicating in some cases that essentially nothing happened. So even adding just little messages that are like, you, f you know, feel like it, like nothing happened or something, whatever our version of that will be. So just making sure that players understand kind of how the mechanics are working. The next piece of this update is already accessible for us. We will have more loadout options for the game's launcher. As the mod pack continues to develop, the team plans to build out some more options so that a wide range of PCs can experience a lot of what Wildlander offers in terms of graphics. These are going to be more user-friendly. Adding on to the user-friendly additions in this update, let's quickly talk about controller functions. Currently only the basic buttons are in the game, you know, jumping, power hitting, etc. 
With 1.2, we are getting all of the key bindings keyboard players get. Big win for us. Some examples are filling water, bathing, sleeping, and foraging. And this is all with just a controller. Being someone who primarily plays with controllers, this is one of my favorite additions. The general idea of how this will work is similar to other mods, where there's a universal button, in this case RB, that when used in conjunction with another button, let's say A, your character will fill water skins. We don't know currently how customizable this will be from our end, but at the very minimum, it is a big start. One of the most asked for additions to Wildlander is slowly but surely almost available, but not quite, and that's mod customization. Currently, the team does not offer any kind of customization as they wanted to work through all of the major bugs and get everyone to the same spot in terms of quality of gameplay. Now that most of these have been ironed out, they will soon, my guess is shortly after 1.2 goes live, open up to mod customization for everyone. The great news here is that one thing you feel like Wildlander is missing, you can add it to your game. And then when something isn't working properly, as tends to be my experience when modding, you can ask for assistance and hopefully get the problem resolved. There was a vote on whether the Khajiit beloved by all, Inigo, or the Imperial with unending potential and a large pool of things to say Lucian would be added as the first official follower mod in Wildlander. Lucian ended up being the fan favorite to both Dylan and my own surprise. Having never played with Lucian, I am excited not only to see how he is just in general, but also how he will fit into the world of Wildlander. I don't have too much to say about him simply due to lack of experience with him on my end. The biggest appeal to this update definitely has to be the missives. Typically for missives, I use them when either I'm too low level to venture out into the more dangerous adventures, or when I'm just unsure of what to do next. With the missives in the current game, they serve the purpose of providing a number of things to do. The problem I have ran into constantly is the list of things to do currently are fetch and retrieve quests, kill a certain individual, or bring certain items. While there's nothing wrong with that, they don't feel particularly deeply laid into the world. An additional problem is the quest range and difficulty is very small outside of Slay a Vampire, while simultaneously not offering much outside of a little gold. They also are fairly repetitive in nature. Lizzie from the dev team has taken the lead in building out a much more dynamic system with missives. These include a large pool of different quests, an example, a list of herbs the town alchemist needs. Using this example, even the writing for the missive is more gripping. Alchemist required to produce well sabe sagoria. I'm looking for someone to distill alchemy solutions for my experiments. You can expect some gold I have as a reward. The personal touch for the writing of the missives is a good role-playing detail. I get the feeling I'm actually helping a business owner with the needs of their work. This does a couple things for players outside of the obvious source of income and something to do. One of the major benefits of this system is that it builds on the role-playing a player is doing by giving them the opportunity to be a town hunter where you take on missives to collect different meats, pelts, bones, etc. that the town is in need of. While I don't think missives will be especially useful in the later stages of the game where a character is combating the gods themselves, it will give much more room for role-playing and progress in the early to mid-game. The devs have talked a bit about having the gold you receive from these missives be proportional to the difficulty of the task you are undertaking, which is a welcomed addition. There are even some rush orders that have a shorter time span of when it needs to be completed that also come with a larger chunk of gold. Something that we don't know too much about that the dev team is attempting to add to 1.2 is dark missives. Since I don't have anything concrete on what this may entail, I'm going to talk about some things I would like to see for dark missives. Some really cool additions would be if these dark missives could be found on dead citizens from time to time to show that the player isn't the only one doing these jobs. Another benefit would be if these missives had a unique way of being found as opposed to being in public display for the entire town to see. An example, once you have achieved a certain notoriety for completion of other missives, or quests for that matter, you are sent these directly by courier as a sort of progress reward for completing other jobs. The last thing I would like to see from these dark missives is substantial and unique rewards. It would be really cool to get rare magical items from finishing a job. 
One of the smaller changes which we can expect is that if you wake up someone while they're sleeping, they will give you an unhappy response out of frustration that they were woken up, such as, waking me up in the middle of the night? This is what it has come to? I personally think this is a nice touch. The next piece of the update is very much up in the air in terms of whether or not it will be present. However, I do think it's worth talking about. One of the devs from the team has put a focus on refining the bandit system. What this means for us, the players, is that we aren't going to be limited to either robbing them without being caught or being murder hobos, but rather we would be able to have direct contact with the different bandit camps, doing jobs for them and potentially allied with them. Now, due to limited knowledge of how this would play out, I'm not going to go too deep into this part of the update. I will say that if this were to be in the update, with the same polish we have come to expect from the Wildlander team, it would be a massive addition to how the game can and will be played. Next, let's talk about combat. Daedric weapons are always better than elven weapons, right? Well, not in the next update. There is going to be a rebalancing to how the weapon system works. If you've ever played Dungeons & Dragons, think of how weapons can be different qualities. You have the standard iron sword, you can also find a plus one, a plus two, or a plus three. The higher the number indicates the higher quality of craft. While not exactly the same as what will be added to Wildlander, the general idea stays the same. Lesser quality, rare items, such as a poorly crafted dragon bone chest plate, may be worse than a very well crafted glass chest plate. This does a lot for the gear economy in the game. It gives players more to aim for with their gear as opposed to just settling on a dwarven axe. You may want to keep looking for the plus three dwarven axe, for example. Another benefit is that this will make items found in caves and dungeons more varied. That iron sword may be notably better than the steel sword and worth changing out. The final improvements of the update come from UI and HUD changes. Nothing major, but the HUD should look different. Currently, some of what's happening on screen isn't obvious, especially when it comes to the frostfall meter indicating how cold and wet you are. The team is attempting to tweak these so that these parts of the experience feel more organic and obvious, so it is more friendly to new players. Now, that is all I have for you today. Thank you everyone for watching, and good luck in your adventures, Wildlanders!